Disney presents... He'd ride with the law till the battle was through. With a star on his chest, he was law in the West. They called him El Fago, El Gato. El Fago Baca, true hero of the West, was called the man who couldn't be killed. The daring exploits that made his name legend in the Old Southwest began in 1882 in New Mexico. El Fago Baca, El Fago was wise and El Fago was strong. El Fago, El Gato, who made right from wrong. And the legend was that, like El Gato the cat, nine lives at El Fago Baca. I just can't believe it. He's got more lives than a cat. <laughs> His experience with the lynch mob shows El Fago that the Mexican-Americans in the territory need a champion. And this gives him an idea. Do you know what I have decided to do? No. I've decided to study law. I was thinking about it when I was in jail, waiting for my trial. Oh, we need someone like that very badly, senor. I know it will not be easy. It takes years to become a lawyer. But I will buy books. Study nights. I just come from a meeting of the Citizens Committee and they suggested that I propose you run for sheriff. Sheriff? Me? Well, sure. We can't think of a better man for the job. Sheriff Baca was one of the most unusual law officers the West has ever known. When he could, he used his reputation to uphold the law. If that failed, there were always his six guns. El Fago was wise and El Fago was strong. El Fago, El Gato, who made right from wrong. And the legend was that, like El Gato the cat, nine lives at El Fago Baca. But El Fago was more than a fast man with a gun. He was ambitious and he had a goal in life. He knew the day was fast approaching when courts and judges would resolve the problems that once were settled by the law of the blazing six-gun. So El Fago put aside his guns and moved to Santa Fe to study law. El Fago was wise and El Fago was strong. El Fago, El Gato, who made right from wrong. And the legend was that, like El Gato, the cat, nine lives at El Fago. In those days, studying law meant working as a clerk in a lawyer's office by day and burning the midnight oil studying his law books at night. Enforcing the law? You better get out of here, mister. You'll get a dose of the same. If the man committed a crime, arrest him. If not, you let him go. In no case have you got the right to beat him. Well, listen to him, Jimmy. A spouting the law like a barrister at the bar. Yeah, he does talk pretty, don't he? Get out of here. <laughs> This one looks like ready money. See if he's carrying a gun. I'm unarmed. The gentleman speaks the truth. The jail's this way. Let's go. He will arrest him, me. On what charge? For interfering with due process. Resisting arrest. Funny enough. <laughs> Drunk and disorderly. Oh, I'm going to
Drunk and disorderly, five days in jail, or uh, five dollars and fifty-two cents. What shall it be? Well, I, I'll take the fine, Your Honor. Here's a dollar for beer and breakfast, courtesy of the court. Oh, well, thank you, Your Honor. You're, you're a fine gentleman, indeed you are. Next case. His name's Baca, Your Honor. I thought we'd placed a fat one, but yes, wrong. Only eight dollars and fifty-two cents. Charges? The usual. You have somewhat the appearance of gentility, young man, though a bit frayed around the edges. What's your occupation? I'm reading for the law. Indeed? With whom? J. Henry Newman. Oh, I know him well. One of my more formidable, friendly enemies, as it were. Baca, eh? E. Baca. What does the E stand for, young man? Elfigo. Elfigo Baca. Elfigo Baca? Yes, that's right, Your Honor. Former sheriff of Socorro? My past deeds or misdeeds are revelant at this time, Your Honor. I ask that the court get on with the business at hand. None of your lip, young man. Your reputation doesn't frighten me. Drunk and disorderly, disturbing the peace, resisting arrest, uh, interfering with due process of law. How do you plead? Not guilty. Two officers of the law say you lie in your teeth. Seven days or seven dollars and uh, 52 cents. I'll take the seven days. Don't be a fool. Take your dollar and run along. I intend to appeal. You intend to what? Now, be honest, Judge. You call this justice? Order! Order! I think it's about time everyone heard you're the worst poker player in the territory and that you pay your losses out of court fines. Deputies! Deputies, come back here. I cite you for contempt. Get him out of here. I'm sure sorry about this, Mr. Barker. I am too, Mr. Barker. You better lock me up before I remember which one of you hit me. Well, I sure wouldn't have had anything to do with it if I'd have known it was you, sir. If there's anything we can do to make it up, Mr. Barker, we'd sure be glad to oblige. Oh, you might send over to Newman's office for my law books, all right? We'd be glad to. That's over on Federal Street, isn't it? Thank you. Mr. Newman! I didn't expect you, sir. All I needed were the books. Now you promised me you'd stay out of trouble. You gave me a solemn word and look at you now. I'm sorry, Mr. Newman, but just after I Tell left me the later. Office, you paid the fine. Of course I paid the fine. But I took the sentence on principle. We can appeal. Have Hargraves disparged. I have bigger fish to fry than Polka Pete Hargraves. Now, I've wasted enough time already. But I haven't. I've got you a case. My calendar's full now. Let's go. These men are accused of murdering a couple of Twin River cowboys. That is too bad. But it's a plain case of self-defense. They were defending the Miranda property. Miranda? Don Esteban Miranda? Yes, you know him? Fine gentleman. Very old Spanish family. Land trouble? The Twin River Bunch claims the Miranda land by default. These four are scapegoats for a test trial. And for their lawyer, nothing but headaches. Now, come on. Bravely, my friends. You'll hear from me. Woo! Anytime a spread hires Manti, it means war. Manti and his men have been firing into Miranda line shacks, fouling Miranda water holes. Interesting, but dangerous. Forget it. There's more involved here than the guilt or innocence of four vaqueros. Eastern money owns Twin Rivers. It's managed by a Chicago businessman in Town. Miranda is just the beginning. If they swallow up his ranch, they'll have every ranch between Albuquerque and Las Cruces. There's power behind this move, sir. Big men, big business. I'm not so sure it's the kind of business New Mexico should welcome. Someone must have the courage to stand up and call the turn. A man like you could.
Now, just a minute. If there's one thing a lawyer has to learn... ...is to leave his guns at home and stay out of trouble. Now, you stop making speeches for me. Of course, stay out of trouble, but there's something else. Don't let emotion and sentiment run away with you. Before you take a case, find out about the facts, the issues. But that's just what I'm trying to tell you. If I went out to Rancho Miranda, had a talk with Don Esteban, we'd know how to handle the case. Will you get out of here before I lose my temper? <laughs> to Rancho Miranda. All right, to the Rancho Miranda. And, uh... If this is a potential client, you better go out in style. Use my buggy and team. And, uh, put on a clean suit. Nobody goes in, amigo. Sorry. I have business with Don Esteban. Nobody has any business with Don Esteban. Are you holding him under a state of siege? Mm -hmm. If you want to call it that, it's all right with me. See, Miranda's squatting on land that belongs to Mr. Town. Who says so? Horace Town pays my wages. And if he says so, that's good enough for me. Well, if you have a legal right, why don't you go in there and throw Miranda out? I think you better go, amigo, before I turn that pretty little buggy of yours into a hearse. Don Esteban is entitled to legal counsel. You or no one else is going to deny him this. Don't talk snippy to me, Pancho. You know who I am? Rossman T. You'd hire out to the devil himself if he'd pay your price. That's all, Pancho. Back that rig. The name is not Pancho. It's El Fago. El Fago Baca. El Fago Baca? Now look who's talking about hired guns. And him trying to sneak by here like some dude lawyer with big words and city clothes. Well, you sure enough better back out of here right now, Mr. Baca. Or I might be tempted to prove you're just as killable as anybody else. Well, don't stand there gawking, Vince. Back that rig. There you go. Vega! Release the brake. I said release it! Are you hurt, senor? No. No, senorita. I am spoken of as a man who has nine lives. I have several left for which I am now grateful. I'm sorry, senorita. I did not mean to offend you. But you are so... Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Elfa Gobaca. I represent the law firm of J. Henry Newman of Santa Fe. I'm Maria de la Luz, daughter of Don Esteban Miranda. Is it possible for me to see your father? This way, senor. I, I just don't know what to think. Believe me, senor Baca, I'm honored at the loyalty of my four vaqueros, but grieved that it has brought them to such a miserable condition. The defense rests entirely in your hands, Senor Miranda. I'm not sure I understand. You must forgive my boldness, Senor Miranda, but there is no other way. Do you have clear title to your land? That you are the enemy of those without proves that you wish to be the friend of those within. Why? There is much confusion over Spanish grants. Yours is among the largest in the territory. Therefore, a decision on your case could be precedental and important to an attorney like Mr. Newman. An honest answer, senor. As for my personal feelings, I believe your vaqueros are victims of a grave injustice. Thank you very much. Please be seated. What precisely, senor Baca, is the legal position? If you own Rancho Miranda, 
Your vaquero shot in self-defense. If not, they can be tried for murder. I see. When fortune declares itself against a man's house, neither riches nor power can overcome it. Senor Miranda, for every proverb, there is another one to refute it. Have you not heard it said that to fight oppression is to fight for justice, the noblest fight of all? You speak wisely for one so young, senor. Well, on occasion, I've looked into the face of death. Perhaps it helps to age a man. It does. Por favor, Papa. Refreshment for our courageous guest. I'm so glad you thought of this, Maria. You must be thirsty. Allow me. Salud. Salud. I'm afraid, Senor Baca, that uh, if you intend to defend my rights, I, I must discourage you from doing so. Why, Senor? Because I cannot prove this land is mine. No papers of grant? No deed? I must have misplaced them. I, I look for them everywhere and can't find them. All I can prove is that my family has lived on this rancho for almost 300 years. In the court of law, that would be something of great importance. I'm afraid not. With the Americanos, it's the contract, the deed, the proof of the written word. Having no such proof, I can do nothing but remain here in possession until I'm no longer able to do so. Sooner or later, they will starve you out. Move in with their guns. At least I will die honorably in my own house. This is the fate you plan for your daughter? For your faithful retainers? There is no other course. The terms of surrender are unconditional. I will never accept them. You agree with this, senorita? My place is with my father. Senor Miranda. A moment ago, you mentioned the importance of the written word. If I said I could find such written proof for you, would you then change your mind and come into Santa Fe with me? Could you explain more fully, Senor Baca? Every land grant was originally recorded in the old Spanish archives in the governor's palace in Santa Fe. Then again, at the time of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, your father had to come forward with his proof of title. This too was recorded. We have only to secure a court order to try to locate these documents. If they are there, you have won your case. This will do it, Papa. I know it. Yes, but how can we be sure that the record of the Miranda Grant will be there? Besides, you are asking me to abandon my property. And if it isn't, what then? No, Senor Bach. I don't wish to seem ungrateful, but you are wasting your time. I have done my best, Senor. I bid you good day. I'm sorry. Senorita. Wait. They will shoot you even if you step in the door, Senor. I got in. I will get out. You cannot permit this, Papa. You would let him gamble with his life when, when you will not even gamble on the Spanish archives? You are right, Maria. And so are you, my courageous guest. Yes, we will go to Santa Fe with you. And we will engage Mr. Newman to assist us in the fight for our rights. Con permiso. Pedro, Antonio, You know, I still don't believe that legend about your nine lives, Baca. I hope we meet again sometime. Well, you believe what you want, Manti. And I hope we do meet again. hey -ya! Esteban and his daughter occupy a suite at the Palace Hotel. Fine. What do you think of Don Esteban? His daughter is extremely beautiful. <laughs> my only worry is that I'm letting your heart run away with my head. Here. Estimated bill for repairs on my buggy top, $14.90. What about it? Um, well, uh, I'll pay for it out of office expenses. Hmm. There's a petition for a court order giving us access to the Spanish archives. Trot over to the courthouse and have it signed. Do you think we stand a chance? 
Do I think we stand a chance? I'll have you know that I'm not in the habit of taking cases I can't win. Now go on and get that petition in the works. The preliminary hearing is at 10 in the morning. Tomorrow morning? Well, it's getting late in the session. That doesn't leave much time for preparation. All we have to hear now is that Poker Pete Hargraves is presiding. He is. But don't worry. This is a murder trial, and Judge Hargraves is above suspicion. <laughs> there are no fines involved. I'm happy you find comfort in the thought. You better have the Mirandas and caught at five minutes of ten. They'll be there. Mr. Town. each other long before now, but you know how it is, the hurly-burly of business. I happen to represent quite a lot of eastern capital. One of our investments happens to be the Twin River Ranch, you know of it? Yes. There's no point in my beating about the bush, sir. I could use a first-class legal mind on my team, and my banker suggested you. Your banker? Arnold Bixby, a friend and champion of yours, I understand. Oh, I've known Mr. Bixby for a long time. Well, it seems you're not alone. Mr. Bixby is known by everyone in the territory and respected by him. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, care to join our team? Mr. Town, it so happens that I was just retained this morning by the opposing team, the Rancho Miranda. I have already surmised as much, Mr. Newman. Then why are you here? It is sometimes a decided advantage to have a man who is publicly on one team and privately on another. But highly unethical. Ethics, sir, is a medieval concept of human relations confined in these days of enlightenment solely within the ivy-covered walls of backwoods colleges. It is also considered illegal to represent opposing clients at the same time. I do not expect open representation on this occasion, Mr. Newman. I simply ask that you do not defend Miranda with your usual, uh, diligence. A retainer, Mr. Newman. And I might add a substantial one. Mr. Town, when I left home as a young boy, I promised my old father I'd live a life of honesty and integrity. It's times like this that almost make me forget that promise. Almost, but not quite. Now look, if you reach... Now get out of here before I lose my temper. Pick it up. Senor Newman, isn't he here? He will be. Don't worry. Hear ye, hear ye. The court of the county of Santa Fe, territory of New Mexico, is now in session. Judge Hargraves presiding. First on the docket is a preliminary hearing of the territory of New Mexico versus Rodriguez, Sanchez, Hermosillo, and Martin. Will the territorial prosecutor please read the charges? <clears throat> the four named men are employees of Don Esteban Miranda and are accused of deliberately and willfully firing upon and killing Hiram Smith and Joe Elwin, two employees of the Twin River Ranch. The charge is murder. 
The four accused, please stand. <clears throat> the object of this court is to determine whether there is sufficient evidence of murder to bring you men to trial before a jury of your peers. Do these men have counsel? Or will the court have to appoint a public defender? Mr. J. Henry Newman is defending, Your Honor, but he has been delayed. Ah, Mr. Baca again. By what special privilege do you address this court, sir? I'm speaking in behalf of Mr. Newman, sir, in his absence. You are reading for the law when you appeared before me three days ago on a charge of drunkenness and disturbing the peace. Am I to understand that you have been admitted in that brief time to practice before this court of law? No, sir. Then sit down. <laughs> the territorial prosecutor introduces witnesses, please. The witnesses to the armed attack and the shooting are the following. Mr. Ross Mantee, foreman of Twin Rivers. Mr. Clem Higgins. Mr. Jedediah Carr. Mr. John Rainey. I object, Your Honor. Another word out of you, Bakken, I'll have you thrown from this court. Please continue, Mr. Prosecutor. Mr. James Courtright and Mr. Silas Prudy. These men are prepared to testify for the prosecution. You've heard the charges and the names of the witnesses. How do you plead? They plead not guilty, Your Honor. Who are you? Esteban Miranda, the patron of the four accused vaqueros. In the absence of my attorney, I request the right to interpret for them and to speak in their defense. And it's your right, Mr. Miranda, of course. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. The Senor Prosecutor has been led to believe and has given this court the impression that my four vaqueros invaded Twin River property. This is not so. I'm not sure I follow you, sir. My daughter, all the members of my household and myself were held in a state of siege by those men. Verification, Your Honor. Senor Miranda no longer owns the property in question. The accused attacked and killed two innocent men in the performance of duties ordered by their employer on his own property. Seems to be a contradiction of facts here. We fail to see how the guilt or innocence of the accused can possibly be determined without a clear understanding of the property rights involved. Therefore, this court stands adjourned till 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, at which time both parties shall bring forward certified proof of title to the land in which the altercation occurred. We will then proceed with the trial. Please, Your Honor. Oh, please, Your Honor. It will take us a few days, a week, perhaps. Time is also valid to this court, sir. The session for the county ends this week. Therefore, the court asks you to make a special effort. Ten o'clock tomorrow. Mr. Newman is not in his office. Do you think he met with an accident? Oh, no, no, nothing like that. Uh, he thought I would be allowed to handle the business of the hearing. He's himself, no doubt, searching the archives. He should be returning any moment now with an abstract of your title. An abstract? It's a copy of the record signed by a justice of the peace. So, you see, there is no cause for worry. Now, go to your rooms, rest, have a good dinner, a sound sleep, and tomorrow, victory. We will try and be as confident as you, Senor Barker. Good afternoon, Mr. Baca. Have you seen Mr. Newman? No, I haven't. Would you care to leave a message? Yes. You tell him I want to see him. I haven't seen Mr. Newman in several days. What's the matter? Trouble? When I find him, my friend, there will be plenty of trouble. Where do you think you're going? To 
from my office. Well, your office won't be needing you anymore. And neither will Santa Fe. The only place you're going is out of town. Because we don't like your kind of element around here. For the first time since I decided to become a lawyer, Mantee, I'm sorry I gave up my guns. Well, that's an easy ailment to remedy. Hey, Jed, give Poncho here the loan of your handgun. All you gotta do is pick it up, friend. Then you'll be armed. That's a long way down and a long way back up. If it'll make you feel any better, I'll put mine on the ground. going on here? I'll tolerate none of this, Baca. You know the ordinance against revolver fighting. Get out of here, mister. You better not prejudice the boss's case, Manti. That sounds like Judge Hargraves. Aren't you Twin River men? Yes, sir. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Pick up those guns. I said pick it up, Baca. That's not my revolver, Judge. Now clear off the streets, all of you. If I hear of any more hoodlumism, I'll see to it you're denied the privileges of this town. What are you trying to do? Settle a case out of court? As J. Henry says, sir, nothing is ever settled by a gun. It is only postponed. I see. Well, I'll have to have a word with the sheriff about the sort of riffraff that's frequenting Santa Fe. Do that, Judge. My observation includes all offenders, Baca. Even you. You saw what? Down there on the street. They were trying to kill you, weren't they? Perhaps a bit too much to drink. They were having fun with me. Some of them were in court this morning. My father's enemies are now yours. You told my father and me not to worry, but I must know the truth about Mr. Newman. I wish I knew the truth about Mr. Newman. He's with the enemies of my father? Yes. But whether willingly or unwillingly is what I intend to find out. As soon as you go back to your hotel. What will you do? You'd better go. Don Esteban will be worried. You will be careful. Did I not tell you I'm supposed to have nine lives? How many are there left? It would be bad luck to keep count. Vaya con Dios, señor.
The Palace Bar. All right, men. You give the boss room to breathe or he might die. All right, now. You do just as the boss says. Tell them to go home. You heard him. Go on. Get out of here. All right, now. You take me to Mr. Newman. I don't know where he is. Mr. Town, then. Pronto. Take that gun, Mr. Baca. There's a good fellow. That way, Mr. Baca, if and you please. Well, it's about time. Where you been? I had difficulty finding your new address. Yeah, have a seat. Take a cigar. Real fine pan of tellers, imported. Shall I ring for a drink? <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> well, I'm sorry I couldn't make the hearing, but uh, I was unavoidably detained. How did it go? Excellent. But to appear at 10 in the morning with proof of title. Well, let's see now. It's uh, 8 minutes 12. Well, I guess we've lost this day, but as the poets say, there's always tomorrow. I should have known you were being held prisoner. My dear boy, did you really think I'd desert the cause? I'm sorry, Mr. Newman, but I had my doubts. What with your reputation and all, I somewhat expected to be rescued. Have you seen Tom? Not since I was escorted here by Man T. Has he told you why he's holding us? He's taking a tremendous risk. Well, Town's Eastern Syndicate has inside information on a proposed route of the Southwest Railroad. And Miranda's property turns out to be the fattest parcel in the county. They're desperate men playing for enormous stakes. And of course, he would not stop at murder. That is a morbid thought. Can't we change the subject? <laughs> Enjoy that brand, Newman? Oh. Excellent. I ordered them from a quaint little tobacco shop I discovered last year in Havana. I would give you the address, but I'm afraid by the time delivery is made, you will have abandoned the habit. It's a habit I will hate to abandon. Mm, I love a good cigar. Almost as much as life itself, as it were. The longer I know you, sir, the more I regret you couldn't see your way to playing on our team. Mm. Circumstances, Mr. Town. And uh, Puritan conscience, sir? Quite possibly. The conversation has taken an interesting turn, but the hour grows late. I have plans for you and your clerk, Mr. Baca. And we will probably be most unhappy to hear them. Unfortunately, things have gone much too far for me to repeat my former offer. About joining your team? Every man has his price, of course. And I would eventually have found yours. But with Mr. Baca entering the picture, we have complications, such as pride, courage, self-esteem, and so forth. Are you aware of the event of our murder? Not necessarily, Mr. Baca. My associate here tells me you've been looking for Mr. Newman most of the day, with blood in your eye. We know a half dozen reputable citizens who will so testify. That might account for Mr. Newman. What about me? You will be found dead a few yards from Mr. Newman. 
You looked for him, found him just before dawn. Both shot simultaneously, both dead. You have a devious and detestable mind. Thank you, sir. And now I must bid you fond farewell. Oh, uh, you really have no idea how much I admire you men of the West and the passing of your kind. But we mustn't let anything stand in the way of progress, must we? Good night, gentlemen. I'm not worth a plug nickel. Oh, plug nickel, he says. Get it? Mr. Mantee, there's something you might have forgotten. The mark of the rope on our wrists. How will you explain that? That's a very keen observation. You'd better be very careful, gentlemen. A lot of little ways you can slip up. Mr. Newman, you're not in the habit of going about armed, are you? How will his revolver be explained? The boss has thought of everything. Help! Help! Gag him. The one peep out of you and you're gonna get yours right here. There's only one thing I regret, amigo. I'd have liked the chance to put down the great El Pego Baca in a fair stand-up gunfight. As long as we both still live, Manti, there's no reason to give up hope. Now him. with a Smith and Wesson. You take Newman. Where's your knife? Okay, now remember, as soon as they're down, cut the tie ropes and the gags and take them with you. Now move! What's going on here, mister? Take his gun and cover him. If Manti lives, I think you will be very embarrassed, no? To be shot by a man with his hands tied behind his back? For a high roller like Van T, it's a fate worse than death. <laughs> I believe, 
a Ross Mantee. Mr. Mantee is being treated for severe gunshot wounds in the county jail, Your Honor. In view of recent and dramatic developments, does the counsel for the territory still insist on pressing charges of murder against the four vaqueros? The territory will withdraw the charges of murder, Your Honor, in view of the fact that the principal witnesses for the territory have themselves been served indictments on charges of attempted murder, grand larceny, attempted bribery, extortion at all, and submits that the charges be re-entered as manslaughter to be so judged at the discretion of the court. It would seem that the first problem of the court, however, still remains. The legal ownership of Rancho Miranda. The court is aware that the defense has not had time to consult the Spanish archives. The territory will concede the Miranda claim by default and that the Twin River claim has been proven fraudulent and was arrived at by theft and extortion. In all fairness, then, this court can only assume that the four accused employees acted out of self-defense and loyalty and hereby releases them from custody. Case dismissed. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, I'm oh, very happy that you wound up the way it did. I guess congratulations. How can I ever thank you, Senor Newman? Oh, don't include me. Mr. Baca handled everything. Thank you, Senor Baca. I'm putting his name up for the bar examinations. He'll be a practicing lawyer in a matter of weeks. What will you do then, Senor Baca? We'll go back to Frisco, hang up my shingle. Many cousins there need legal advice. Would you consider staying in Santa Fe? Too many good lawyers like yourself, sir. Would a uh, junior partnership make any difference? With you? Who else, Mr. Baca? Who else? And I'm not being entirely unselfish about this. You're a well-known figure now. Think of the increase in business, the prestige, the... I must be getting old. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the land of big men, when this great west was wild, El Fago was small and his nature was mild. El Fago was wise and El Fago was strong. El Fago, El Gato, who made right from wrong. And the legend was that, like El Gato the cat, nine lives had El Fago.